What's going on everyone, in today we're going over 5 tips to improve your August SAT score literally within a week. The SAT August is nearly here and students are scrambling to get the highest score they possibly can. It's the first SAT of the summer that is going to continue the 2023-2024 the cycle. This last stretch of SATs is when students take the SAT the most because they're about to you know, apply for their colleges in November and some students are just becoming juniors and they just are exposed to the SATs. So now as a junior they want to take the SAT right away. So whether you're taking the August SAT or even the one after, you want to improve your score as much as you can and here's how effective time management time management is hard and i know a lot of students have been struggling with st calculator section sometimes the knock calc is usually something easy for most students or at least in terms of getting high accuracy might be a little hard but students usually don't have much of a time crunch and especially if you know all the tips tricks and patterns then the st non calc becomes super simple but the st calculator section can be kind of hard simply because of the fact that some students just don't know how to use a calculator guys that's like another sub tip you want to know how to use your ti84 calculator and if you're not using a ti84 you got to use one because that graphing calculator is very powerful and it can simplify problems a lot so if you really want to finish problems fast and you don't want to struggle on the st any st section reading or calculator or uh, writing or non-cal you want to make sure you practice time management skills and the best way to do this is take a practice test and see how fast you finish each section maybe you can even have sub timers where you see how fast you finish a science passage how fast you finish a history passage right this way you actually understand what are you taking up time on let's say you suck at science passages and that's really what's causing you to spend like 15 16 minutes on one passage we want you to skip the science passages when you take the address at t and go back to them at the end that way you at least can knock out the other uh, passages and get the maximum amount of points now ideally you want to be at the point where you finish before the clock expires for every single section and that will come at practice but if you need some time management tips that's a great way of seeing how fast you are there's my clock. Next tip is to utilize official practice tests. Guys, the best type of test practice for any exam is the exam itself, right? Or practice exams for that exam. Because these are papers or digital papers, depending on which SAT you're taking, that are gonna literally show you problems that you're gonna see on the SAT, just in like a different format, right? And if you're able to do these problems, then the other problems will be the same thing. And just like different people, different numbers, but the same pattern, the same tips and tricks that are needed to be applied to solve the problem. And the best way to practice whether you're actually able to recognize these patterns is through these practices these practices are we're gonna be able to tell you that hey you know how to do new equations or hey you're pretty good at quadratics or hey you kind of suck at reading you need to use annotation skills to maybe comprehend the text better and if you don't recognize these patterns and tips and tricks it's one probably because you didn't practice enough or two you just don't know the concepts well enough which is why i do recommend checking out my st math course and reading course in the description below because it can really help you understand patterns tips tricks really quickly having a notes and flashcards is something that is slept on on the st community and a test general right when you're taking college exams you have a lot of notes that you handwritten because a lot of times in lectures you're just writing down notes right and by writing down notes i'm sure teachers have told you this by writing down notes and you know writing stuff on flashcards you retain information better so how do you retain information better guys you write stuff down so write stuff down as much as you can for example i have st math notes that i sell but these notes were first created when i was taking my sat and i would write stuff down i literally made my own sheet of notes 25 pages of notes myself writing down concepts writing down tips and tricks and patterns i learned that i've seen and Every night, I would just rehearse them over and over until I could literally remake those that same 25-page note sheet again and again and again. But obviously, to sell it, I added some stuff for you guys to make things more up-to-date. The point is, creating your own note sheet for whatever exam you're taking, not just the SAT, is going to help you a ton because it's going to help you retain information better. And you're like, oh, I remember writing that down. And then that trick is just going to pop in your brain, and it's super simple. And flashcards are great to review things, right? Like formulas, you can you know, see a flashcard, I answer the question, next flashcard, answer the question, next flashcard. I keep going, keep going, going. And this rehearsal technique is something that's used by dental students, med students, uh, computer science students, college students, high school students, middle school students, even our middle school students. So don't sleep on it. It helps a lot. And now comes the story technique. Mastering the story technique is something that is not done a lot by students. And what I mean by a story technique is actually understanding what you are reading. Understanding the story, the purpose of the story, and being in the world of the story. This is basically fully immersing yourself within the story that you are reading, whether it be essay reading section or the essay writing section. And this can be really hard for a lot of students because what happens is, you know, you read the text and halfway through, you start thinking about other stuff. You start thinking about, damn, I'm really hungry. I wonder what I'm gonna eat after this exam. And that's not good because now you're gonna forget what you just read. And what happens when you forget what you just read? You're gonna have to go back and read that part all over again. And the more you do that, the more time you're wasting. And that's why students struggle on the ST reading section is because they reread so much because they just don't comprehend everything. So how can you actually understand the story and match the story technique? Annotate, 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 annotate. It's gonna help you draw connections, it's gonna help you think, understand things much, much quicker. Some people just don't annotate. I don't know why, there's something against it. They're like, oh my God, I wanna write less, not more. I do not wanna pick up my pencil. But the thing is guys, you're gonna have to sacrifice picking up your pencil and those 
muscles and finger muscles so you comprehend the text. This way, you have to reread it. I'd rather you spend time annotating versus rereading the text over and over again and still getting the question wrong. Because one, you're gonna waste time. And two, you're getting the question wrong anyway. So like now, not only have you wasted time, but now you're getting question wrong, and now you're gonna get other questions wrong because you can't even finish them. So that's why you wanna make sure you match the story technique, comprehend what you're reading. Another good way to do that is just to excite yourself before reading. You're like, yo, read the topic. You're like, oh my God, John Wilkes Booth attacked Lincoln. Like, I can't wait to read this. This is something I've always been passionate about my whole life. Which obviously you have, you probably could care less. But tricking your brain into thinking that is gonna make your brain actually love it. And it's a crazy technique, and I used to do it all the time. And I was like. Wow, I can't believe this actually works, but it does work. Developing a balanced study plan is extremely important, and a lot of students just don't realize how important it is because, A, you know, you only can perform based on how you practice. If you don't practice it or practice correctly, you're not going to perform well, right? If you practice how to do a golf swing wrong, then on the actual tournament, you're going to still do it wrong. So you want to make sure you're practicing correctly, which is why I know a lot of students study differently. Some students study math, some students study reading uh, first, then math, or they spend maybe a week on math, a week on reading. But the idea is you want to study both equally, preferably the best way to do this is study like two hours of math a day and then study two hours of reading a day because this way you can like split it up properly and this way you're not just focusing on math just focusing on reading now obviously you're probably gonna progress in one section more math score is probably gonna increase faster at a faster rate than your SG reading score that's perfectly okay so now you can spend maybe one hour of math a day and three hours on reading so just edit your study plan so that your scores are as high as possible on both sections don't be that student who just does math or just does reading and then they put intense pressure on themselves to perform on that ST section. Just have that balanced study plan so you can potentially get a good balanced score on both. Like if you're able to crack 700 on both, you're already at a 1400 plus. And nine times out of 10, if you're studying properly, like using my course or having a really good study plan, then you probably will get like a 780 in math. And then if you get 700 plus in reading, you're most likely at like a 1500 plus, which is at that point, you get into Harvard. So you want to get into Harvard? Then, you know, it's time to study correctly. Comment down below which tip you guys like and what your study plan is. I'm actually interested in what your study plan is, how you study. So comment that down below. I'm going to reply to every single comment on this video. So thank y'all for watching. Peace. Thank you.